Hello everyone and welcome to another Doctor Who review. We are back with Doctor Who the Caretaker. And, uh, yeah, so we see the Doctor going un deep undercover as a human in Coalhill School. And uh, just right off the bat, Tom, what did you think of this? I found it enjoyable. It was it was something different, and it did feel like a bit of classic Doctor Who going into this, and them running around like headless chickens and trying to, to trying to get rid of this monster, the world, this mm. monster A and sort of thing. And I thought, I thought it was pretty well done. Yeah, it's, it's weird that you think you was saying that it's different. I thought it was very similar to some other stories we've had. Like the writer of this is the same guy that did uh, the Lodger and Night Terrors, not Night Terrors. Uh, that one with the Cybermen under the shopping, like center. Oh, the shopping. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I, uh, I can't remember what one that it, was. Yeah, the two that have got James Corden. Yeah. In. This does. This did remind me of School Reunion quite a bit. Yeah, the School Reunion is something that it reminded me of, which is good because that's a yeah. very that's, good episode. Oh yeah. And, uh, yeah, I really enjoyed, like, the tone of this. Like, the Doctor had some of his darker moments where he, like, got very, quite intense and angry. But at the same time, there was a lot of, like, funny moments as well, which is great. Oh, yeah, there was some quite funny moments. Uh, I like the fact that Doctor mistakes Kara's boyfriend to being that completely other person, the other teacher. Yeah, the teacher that looks like Matt Smith's Doctor. Yeah, I, I, yeah, that... I think they did that on purpose a little bit. Oh, yeah, they did. He yeah. actually said, like, a certain young time traveller, like, she'd chosen him because, like, he reminded her of Matt Smith's doctor. Yeah. It's mad. <laughs> yeah, he had the bow tie and everything, the bow tie, the hair and everything like that, so that made me yeah. laugh quite a bit. And yeah. I just love the fact that the doctor, when he looks at Danny as well, he said, PE teacher. No, I'm a maths teacher. PE teacher. Yeah. <laughs> There's one thing about this episode, um, another thing that I thought was very samey. You, you, obviously, you remember in The Power of Three, uh, yes. the episode where they kept having the things where they kept flashing back and forth from real life and Doctor life. Yeah. Uh, obviously, the opening of this episode, I thought, was very reminiscent of that. And uh, to be honest, out of The Power of Three, it's an episode that I've not hidden the fact that I don't actually like that episode particularly. Power, um, Power of Three had the problem which... I had with it was that yeah. first act good, sad, good. The whole ending of it just ruined it. The ending was just like came out of nowhere and was resolved in a matter of seconds. Yeah, but I, I I just wasn't a fan of the episode in general. Yeah. But the one thing that I thought was actually good in the episode were those flashes away to Doctor Life because like you had like four or five different stories in that episode that you just see like little tiny moments from. Yeah. And I, I like it when Doctor Who does stuff like that. It just reminds you there's a lot of adventures like where they're getting into trouble and we're yeah. not seeing those on screen. Like, well, it, there's a lot more going on than what we see. Yeah, it's, like you said, with the stuff at the start, the very start of the episode with them running around and stuff like that, being tied up to pillars and stuff like that, roasting on a, yeah. like a planet. It, was, it made me laugh quite a bit. And I, I like the contrast. The reason time she goes away and does something and she comes back and she has to meet up with Danny for on, on a date and she has to give an excuse every single time. I thought that was quite funny. Yeah, she's just been running away from soldiers with lasers, and then he's like, are you ready for your morning jog? And she's like, yeah. Yeah, and then when she goes back, she's just dead. Yeah. Yeah, that made me laugh. Oh, but. I like the, uh, just like silly lines thrown in here and there. Like, the, you mentioned the scene with the two pillars. Um, the doctor's um, just saying, like, oh, we're not going to starve to death. The uh, yeah, the sand piranhas will get us first. And, she, and then she's like, what sand piranhas? <laughs> That's quite a bit. But, uh, what did you think of Scovox Blitzer, the uh, the villain of this episode, that really that robot thing? I like the design. The design was really cool, and also I liked again, like like I said, like the previous episode. I like when they actually used the actual practical prosthetics, stuff. prosthetics yeah. or practical effects and stuff like that. And I love I love this the design of it, and it just felt like it was just there, you know, it just because it was mm. actually built to be there. It's not CGI, you know. Yeah, same as with, obviously, the, the teller in the previous episode, as yeah. you said. And uh, I, I love that Doctor Who's bringing a lot more prosthetics and stuff back, because it's, they had gone dangerously into the territory last season and the season before, just using CGI monsters. Yeah. Uh, uh, a notable yeah. example, I think, is the uh, Cold War episode with the Cy not Silurian, the, um, ah, what they call the Ice, ice Warrior. That's it, the Ice Warrior with his uh, CGI head. Oh, uh, and you mean his tiny little prosthetic hands? 
Yeah, I think the amount of prosthetics they're using now is a direct result of like the criticism they had for that CGI oh, head yeah. of Last Warrior. Yeah, I, f- I think I think there was a, there's been quite a bit of back- backlash with the CGI on Doctor Who because the thing is, why Doctor Who is a good show, its budget varies per episode. That's the thing, mm. and I can understand it, we're building we're using CGI. It costs. A, I know it could be in some places it could be cost effectively, like basically you can save yeah. money. But at the same time, if you don't have a good team, I'm not saying Doctor Who doesn't have a good team, but what I'm just saying, basically, they're going to have to do it on the cheap, you know, mm-hmm. because they're not going to have the resources to make it this amazing sort of looking thing in the time strength they have and also with the money they got. Exactly. Like, the Doctor on Earth episodes are usually, almost always, the um, the lower budget episodes for obvious reasons. They're saving their budget because, like, say, like, next week, the trailer shows it's going to be on the moon. There's going to be all these like, CGI creatures. Like, this, It looks like a very big budget episode yeah. next week. Giant so this spot. one, they were trying to save money. And okay, like, big prosthetics do cost a lot of money, and sometimes they probably have used CGI because it's cheaper. But I think in the case of this episode, a prosthetic is probably actually cheaper than the CGI, which I think was a really good idea that they went with that. I like the fact that the Doctor went undercover as John Smith as the caretaker. Yes. That was really Yeah, I like that he's using the John Smith name again. Yeah. It just literally just comes in, and it's an excuse of the reason why he's there, and Carl's like, what can you tell me? He went, well, what happened to the previous show? You didn't kill him. And he's like, no, 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 no. But he's going to have a massive headache when he wake up in the morning. <laughs> and it's just like, it, and it, it's going to be wondering, well, why is Carl attached to the ceiling or some, some weird line like that? <laughs> it's some weird, it's uh, some funny yeah. stuff. I, I like that scene. Like, I, I think that's where the majority of the, the comedy came from with these episodes, was all the little things that he had about going undercover like he was so sure he was passing for human but like everyone was like there's something weird about that caretaker yeah <laughs> behind his back everyone knew there was something wrong with him yeah he said he's an all there yeah. and i like the fact that it was based in um carl Hill's, hill yeah carl hill's yeah, school. Same school that susan went to in the first episode yeah I, I like the fact they went back to that again because um I think they um, in the classic series they only went to it twice, like, the, like you said, the very first episode, and then with the seven um, with the Koi Doctor in remembrance of the of the Daleks. Yeah, that's a good episode actually. Like yeah. it takes place like a week after the first ever episode of Doctor Who. Yeah. And it's funny because like one of the people he he ordered something, and when he goes to collect it, like the person's like, I swear he said you had white hair. <laughs> yeah, that, that was a good reference. That was a very very good reference. <laughs> Like it's a week later he goes from William Hartnell to Sylvester McCoy in this like one cashier's eyes. Yeah, it's, it's like, so weird. Yeah, it's like over the course of like nearly two decades he ends up um changing like complete faces. Yeah. I've uh, that made me laugh quite a bit. Um It's a shame that's a story that's not referenced nearly enough actually. Yeah, remembers the dialogue was a good one. But yeah, that's a story that connected to the very start of Doctor Who. Like that's one of the first times they really went back and did something with the origins. Like but, people moan at Moffat for the thing in uh Listen yeah. and going back to his childhood. But it's only one step beyond what was happening with McCoy's era anyway. Well they were I mean I think they wrecked on the whole the whole thing with Scarrow blow, blowing up that was yeah. something. They wrecked Oh they they've done a thing with that where Scarlet Scarrow had a decoy planet which looked identical and uh, that was the one that actually got blown up or something. I still call bullshit on that. I, I think they retconned that in the audiobooks with McGann, which have now been made canon. It's, it's, it's hard to keep track with Doctor Who, what's canon and what's not yeah. canon. It's, it really <laughs> is hard to keep track sometimes. Yeah, you have to have Google to be able to really sort everything out. <laughs> and, but, um, what do you think of Courtney? Courtney, Courtney. You know, the annoying, uh, bad influence or whatever. Oh, the, the, the girl. Um, I thought she was a bit annoying. Oh, yeah, she was a bit annoying, but again, it's like it's 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 like a modern interpretation of of a teenager. So you know, I'm not really fussed. I wasn't fussed. Yeah. I, I, it, I, I, the only reason I got a bit annoyed is I can't believe the Doctor just showed her the inside of the TARDIS and then actually took her on a trip later. Like he's barely he barely knows this girl. All he knows is that she's like everyone hates her. Yeah, it, it, why would he take her of all people? I don't know because um, Doc. I think, I think the Doctor always like taking like the Revel sort of person with him sometimes or the outcasts of the group mm. he also he always have done it that's the thing he, he, he always takes the people that always stand out from the group that was the thing with the doctor yeah i mean uh, what i'd really like to believe like is that they're setting up someone for yeah. like or you it, know like a companion for like years down the line like maybe yeah. go back in two years and she's older and she's not as annoying and yeah it, it made me laugh quite a bit when the doctor because the reason why she she showed her the inside of the tardis was because he just had that argument with um danny and clara about not approving relationship and it was an interesting scene with 
Danny basically calling the doctor, oh, you're not a soldier, you're an officer. Yes. You, like, combine with your troops. I recognise his type. Yeah. And I think that's a very, very good way to sum up the... Uh, I, I, think, I think that's a good good contrast to what the Doctor is sometimes. And uh, yeah. I think this version of the Doctor wants to be forgotten as that version. Like, he wants to change. Yeah, he doesn't want to be known as the soldier. Yeah, because I think ever since um, the new series of Doctor Who started, um, that's what, what the Doctor has been a little bit. He has been this officer, so... Yeah. Not, not completely, but... There's obviously occasion when the Doctor would go away and would ha- have to get people to help him on sort of stuff, and I think he's trying to detach himself from that. Yeah. Quite I mean, if you look back to the Stolen Earth, yeah. was it the Stolen Earth, the one that then came and uh, there was the insane Dalek, and he was like, yeah. say, and Davros noticed, basically, Doctor, you turn normal people into soldiers. Yes, I, I, I mean, I think it was a very good episode. I think that was um, the last mem- member of the cult of Scarra at yeah. the Daleks, and um, but there was um, there was uh, there's been other things along the way, like the Good Man Goes to War, where they make that sort of comment as well. And Rory says a couple of times to Matt Smith's Doctor, like the problem is you make people scared that they're not going to impress you or something along yeah. those lines, and, the, and uh, mm-hmm. that's why he makes that's why he's so dangerous. And again, it's like the biggest reference. Well, I think one of the biggest ones has been the War Doctor himself. Exactly. Like, yeah. he's basically... He, that oh, old doctor is... I was thinking the old doctor is red, because, like, it's the one episode that's all he's known for. Yeah, well, I mean... Well, I mean, they, they've done audio books on... Uh, they, they're starting to do do books on him now. Yeah, which, yeah, yeah, one of the books is in my local library, I saw it yeah. there. But, Apparently yeah. it's very good. Like, I read a review of it, I just need to actually pick up the book at some point. Yeah. I, I, like, I like they address that, because it's something that has a lot of people have been saying for, for the last few years, and it just and it has been brought up in storylines, but I'm glad mm-hmm. they, a character that's come along and actually addressed it. Addressed it. Yeah. And actually said it Put to it the on Doctor's screen place. and said, this is what, this you is are. how the Doctor destroyed the Time Lords and the Daleks. Yeah. I've, I, I, it has been referenced throughout this season about, about the Doctor being a soldier and him yeah. trying to detract himself as being like a soldier or an officer or that sort of thing, you know? I, I, I thought, thought there was some very good contrast here. And then speaking of the whole soldier thing, I like the bit at the end when they try to capture the um, the alien at the end. Yeah, Danny comes in, saves the day, kind yeah. of thing. Yeah, it made me laugh a little bit because of him running up to it and then doing that, like, unreal, de- gravity-defying jump over the alien. Yeah, that jump was a little bit ridiculous, but it was pretty cool for an action scene. Yeah. It made me laugh a little bit, and he used the invisible watch quite a bit as well. And it, yeah, the invisibility watch when Danny's in the TARDIS and thinks the Doctor doesn't know, but he's going on and it's obvious that he does, and they have that big shouting match. Yeah. I thought that was a really cool scene. Yeah. It, the bit that made me laugh a little bit on when um, when they had parents even and everything like that, when um, the two te- when the two um, parents are sitting down, both speaking to Clara and Danny, and basically they both get up and leave the room, and I think it's the um, troublemaker parents who basically say, say, "Well, she was definitely right about those two. And I think that made me laugh a little. I don't know why that made me laugh a little bit. Yeah, I like those references to like. I mean, that's the thing. If if two teachers were dating, like you know, every student in the school would know. Oh yeah, yeah, that's the thing. It's like it reminded reminded me when I was back in secondary school when basically yeah. when two, it was obvious that two teachers were dating back in my school and everyone bloody knew it. Mm, of course everyone, they did. Everyone talked about it. It's it, it, it's just one of those things that made me laugh a little bit. Also, did you catch the river um, the river song reference? Yes, he said that he lived with otters for a month because him and River had a really bad fight. Yeah. <laughs> it made no sense, but it just made me laugh. Quite I like that this Doctor's reference River as well because people keep saying, oh, it's getting away from what the Matt Smith era was too much. Yeah. But like, the occasional name drop of someone like that, that's great. Yeah. Um, I Also, finally, in the final, the final scene as well, the thing that we didn't mention about the police officer getting killed by the mm. alien... And then uh, there's... Yeah, that's the thing I like. They brought back the promised land, and I, I like the I like that they took like a two episode break yeah. from it, basically not mention it at all, and then two episodes later they finally did bring it back up because I said I said this to you in the previous parts. Um, I was going to get annoyed if they were going to keep bringing this up over and over and over again, but they didn't, so I'm quite happy with that. Yeah, they're pacing it quite well because obviously I think. People have said that Moffat's been a bit heavy-handed with the overall story arc sometimes. Yeah, he has. Uh, Every episode having it. Yeah. Well, and uh, I think he's learned from that. And I think, I mean, this has been a really strong season so far. It might be the strongest season since, well, I think season six was a really great one. I've, I think it depends who you speak to, because like, I still feel that 
people are still mixed about this season. I think it's one of those seasons people will seem to like or not like. It's it's mm-hmm. gone it's gone very in a new direction, it's probably the best way to put it. It's like it's trying a lot of new things and I don't mind that with Doc Two. Honestly yeah. with one It's all about regeneration. <laughs> yeah, they're trying new stuff and like you said with the whole storyline sort of thing, because I think the most heavy handed storyline that Moffitt overseeing the showrunner is the 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 whole River Song wedding thing. Yeah. That was That's so the thing. I love the overbearing series season. Doctor Who, but I don't like the last episode particularly. Yeah. That no, I mean the that story arc was so annoying. It got on my nerves towards the end. Yeah. And then it, the final episode was like, really? Okay, yeah. you just cluster everything together as a complete mess, but okay. Yeah, I wasn't a fan of that one. <laughs> the Wedding of River Song. Yeah, that wasn't a, I wasn't too... Less said about that episode, the better, anyway. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. Uh, so is there anything else? I mean, I think the way that Danny was introduced to what the Doctor does was pretty cool. Like in the, uh, the school hall where Skybox Blitzer is just shooting the shit out of everything and he's just in the room with all the explosions. Yeah, that made me laugh. And I like, I like that Clara tried to cover it up and say, no, 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 it's an activity it's a play. play. <laughs> it's a play. And then, he, and then Danny's like, how stupid do you think I have? Most the doctor, just lights and special effects. Yeah. And then the Doctor said, well, I, I could take a crack at that if you want. Yeah. That made me laugh. He talks about wiping his memory. But... Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm liking the character of Danny. I'm, hope, I'm glad that he knows now. Yeah. I want him to go on like adventures and stuff with them yeah it's, it's a very very different character which it will surprise me i thought it was going to be a bit like this but um mm. I, I don't know how to describe it but it just taken me back a little bit like he's a character that does something different it's the best way to put it it's uh, I'm, I'm curious to see where they're going to go with this and i'm curious to see how his relationship with Clara is going to go and the car and everything you know there's one thing though that i've i've I think a show like Doctor Who could actually get away with something like this. If they were to do a two-parter episode, yeah. I'd love a two-parter that starts like this, and then you know when Danny goes in with the invisibility watch to the TARDIS? Yeah. I'd love it if then they actually do go somewhere. He's just like, you know what, we'll pick this up again in a bit. And they actually do go have another adventure, and then it's like the end of the two, like the first half, and the second half is like another half in this story, and then you go back to the school, and it's like, oh yeah, let's just finish this up quickly. Yeah. I, it's like, I think Doctor Who could get away with doing a story like that, where like there's two basic stories, and it's just split up really strange. Yeah, I, I think Doctor Who can get away with it, but I think at the moment, um, because it's something that's been a problem with Doctor Who, I feel, is that since Matt Smith's um, run as the Doctor, Moffat has this momentum sort of thing. Let's don't do two parters, you know. Although the finale actually, this year is a two parter. I'm actually glad about that, to be honest. Yeah. I'm actually really glad about that. He did save the series uh, season six when they first brought in. They stuck, uh, no, it was season, season seven when they first brought in the whole oh, no two part of all. Part of the reason they did that, like he did say, if a story warranted being a two part, like as if as we were shooting it, we was realised he was getting way too much footage or something. Like he would be up for making it a two part, or if the script needed it or something. Yeah. And I think it did in a few. Uh, a few times, but I think it was just if they had added to the story, they wouldn't have had enough for two full episodes. Yeah, that's why they kept it short. Fair enough. Um, uh, some people do say two parters drag on a bit. I don't mind two. Um, I don't mind two parters, but um, blatantly, it's it, within this sea um, in Matt Smith run. There were some episodes that needed two parts because they were rash. Like the Power of Three, for instance, like we just yeah. mentioned, that should have been a two parter because that ended way, way too quickly. Well, one thing I'd like instead of two parts is maybe they just do extended episodes. Um, like, yeah, I just don't mind like that. every now and then, like in the middle of like a season, you'll have all these regular length episodes, but then there'll just be like one or two scattered here and there where it's like an extra 15 minutes long. Yeah. Just something like that, just to really just space it out a little bit more. Yeah. Okay. Like, I'd be happy with them doing that because then there's no risk of it dragging, but also you don't have to wrap it all up too quickly at the end as well. You've got time actually to tell a cohesive story anyway. <laughs> yeah, that would mean it's like the guy the again yeah, the guy who wrote the wrote this episode done some interesting episodes. Yeah, I'm not a huge fan time. of um, the lodger. Yeah. To be honest, it's all closing time. I just yeah, I'm not a huge fan, but I liked this a lot more because it had some of the best elements yeah. from those stories. Unicorn and the Wasp was all right. Did he write that as well? Yeah he wrote that, yeah. Yeah. I was alright with that episode. It's not one I've gone back to since though, I'll be honest. Yeah. But he did do the Shakespearean code. I like that one. Yeah, that would mean he's done that, so, you know. He's done Yeah, some he's, good he's stuff. a good writer. I just didn't like his last couple of outings, but I think he's mm-hmm. back on track. Yeah. Uh, so. Yeah, so give it a score out of 10, I suppose. Uh, I'd give it an 8. I'd probably give it an 8 as well. 
Well, thank you guys for listening, and uh, be sure to tune in again next week where we'll be reviewing the next episode, Kill the Moon.